Hi, this is Jan from Sleeping Baby Productions, and I'm going to show you how to make a reversible double layer sling where you don't see um, the opposite fabric at the shoulder when you um, wear it reversed. Uh, most of the, most slings, um, if you just have two fabrics, they're the same length, you sew them together in a square and then sew the rings in, what you end up with is you see the reverse color sewn onto the main color if you wear it um, the other way around. Uh, this will allow you to show just the... I'm not describing this very well, but you'll see when we're done. Um, this is a companion to a um, page that I have on my website. Uh, I would recommend reading through that first. Um, it's got cautions and things that will not be in this video because I don't want it to be an hour long. Uh, so what you're going to do is cut two fabrics that are the same width, but one of them is between 5 and 10 inches longer than the other. Um, you can use the, the main color as the shorter piece and the lining color is the longer piece. Uh, usually prints are more expensive than solids anyway, so that kind of works out. And then what you're going to do, and that length difference by the way will um, depend on um, what shoulder style you're using. I'm going to do a box pleat on this. If you're doing pleats that you can sew closer to the rings, then you can use less fabric difference. If you're using like a gathered shoulder, you'd want about eight inches difference between them so that you can sew farther from the rings. Um, this one, I'm going to do a box pleat. I'm using about five inches extra. So at the bottom of my sling, my fabrics, you can see that. Uh, here's the five inches extra of the solid compared to the print. Um, these are quilting fabrics, which I normally really do not recommend for a sling. Definitely not in a single layer because they do tear quite easily. They're also very thin and tightly woven, which means um, they tear easily and they'll tear spontaneously without a lot of warning. Um, a double layer is a little bit better because you do have two layers. If one of them tears, you've got another one that you can more or less count on to keep your child safe. But it will wear out faster and it's not going to be as comfortable as an apparel fabric is. So what I've done is just sewn a straight line. I've got the fabrics right sides together and I didn't line them up quite well, so I'm going to do that again. It doesn't hurt to have two lines of stitching here. Anyway. So no, that's not the end of the world. And then this is where it gets a little bit weird. So having sewn that short edge, this is going to be the ring end. I'm going to go and line up these other two short edges that were not lined up before. And sew another seam here. This is where the magic happens, I think. Um, if you are using a slippery fabric, like if you want to do a double layer dupioni sling, it would be a good idea to pin along this. If you're using cotton, um, especially if you're kind of an experienced sewer, you don't really need to pin. It'll more or less hold itself together. So at this point, I'm going to make sure that those ends stay together. And then I'm just sort of finding my way back up to the ring end. And you can see that my six inches has become about three. This is a mess because this is actually the second time I've done this. And then at this point, not a bad idea to pin on each side just to kind of hold those into place. And I'm going to do the same here. Make sure that we ended up with the same amount of overlap on each side. Should be pretty close. And then I'm going to sew down each of the long sides. And I'm leaving this pressed towards there. That'll give us a little bit of extra uh, oomph when I sew the rings in. Because the ring seam is actually going to be right here. You want as much fabric kind of along there as you can to avoid any potential tearing. So I'm just going to really quickly sew along the edges. Um, a few other things that I wouldn't normally do with a sling. You should usually cut the selvage edge off um, because after your fabric is washed it is going to um, especially with cottons like this it's going to wash differently from the rest of the fabric because it's um, woven more sturdily there it just shrinks at a different rate uh, always pre-wash your fabrics the way you're going to wash them after you've sewn um, I did find this out the hard way with a number of clothing items where I didn't wash my fabric first 
sewed my garment, washed it, and then I was not able to wear it again. So anytime you're washing fabrics, anytime you're wearing fabrics, you want to make sure that you wash before sewing. And if you're going to machine wash and hang dry, then machine wash and hang dry your fabric first. If you're going to machine wash and then um, put it in your dryer, then do that with the fabric. And you really don't need usually to, unless you have an incredibly um, fray prone fabric, you don't really need to sew anything before you wash. You are going to get some, you know, some spare threads on the edges, but that's not usually a big deal. So because I don't have any other openings, I'm going to leave one on this side. You could also leave one on the bottom if you wanted to. It really doesn't matter where you put it. I leave about six inches. That's enough for me to get my whole hand inside for the turning part. So good fabrics for double-sided sling tend to be on the thinner side. Not anything that you would ever use for a single layer sling. Um, if you use an apparel weight, like a bottom weight fabric that you would normally use for a single layer sling in a double layer, it would be absolutely impossible to adjust. So I've sewn up the four sides there. I'm just going to clip the corners. And this is something that you'll find in a lot of apparel sewing too. Um, this will allow you to get a nice sharp point when you turn it right side out. And it also reduces bulk in there. So it's a nice point rather than like a curved, messy looking edge. Just make sure you don't actually catch your stitching in there. And then I'm going to reach in and pull this right side out. This is going to take a moment. All right. And I'm not going to actually top stitch around this whole thing because it's a, yeah, half hour video if I do, but you can see I'm just kind of poking the corners out. I'll do that at the top and the bottom. Uh, if you're feeling really conscientious, Get out the iron, if it's not too hot, um, iron around all the sides. It's a much nicer look than just top stitching often. Although, you know, with cottons like this, you can usually finger press and it's not half bad. You just want to avoid, you want to make sure that you're getting the seam there so that it's right on the very edge. Um, if you end up not doing that, then you're going to get an edge like this which doesn't look so nice. So pretend that I've sewn around the whole outside. You don't have to include this edge in that, by the way. Now, when I put in the rings, it's just gonna be blue on blue. And if you sew right on this line, you can barely even tell that you fold it over. Plus you have the integrity of this continuous fabric holding the rings in place um, rather than just a seam. So because this is pretty much a play sling in this case, I'm going to do a box pleat. That's my favorite fold for children to use. So I'm folding in half and then I'm going to open that out. And that's basically folded in thirds. Uh, if you wanted to, you could get out the ruler and actually mark these things and go to the ironing board and press. But I'm doing a video that's quick and dirty, so this is what you get. Here I am going to baste, just to hold these in place. Uh, to baste, I usually reduce my needle tension. Uh, the dial goes between a 1 and a 0, well, 1 and 9. I have this at about a 2. That makes the stitching a lot easier to take out at the end. And then I have a, a long stitch, again, to make the stitches easier to remove. Um, if you are using slippery fabric, definitely a good idea to pin whatever pleats you want to use. And like I said, you can do this with pretty much any um, shoulder style. Gathered, this portion would be longer so that you could fold further back from the rings. Um, in this case, I'm folding about that far back, so I'm going to put my basting line right about where that ended up. Remember to set your tension back to normal. And then I have a stitch that does a um, back tack by itself. So here I'm threading on the rings and I'm gonna try to make sure that that seam ends up right in the rings. And then I'm just going to sew those together. 
You want to make sure that your layers are as neat as you can be. Um, if you wanted to, you could do a zigzag stitch along here to really hide this edge, but with the stitching, it's barely noticeable. Um, plus, you're probably, generally speaking, going to be wearing with the print side out if you do a print on a solid. So this isn't life or death here. If you did two prints that coordinate, or the clash if you're so inclined, um, then you could do a decorative stitch right over that edge. Uh, that's what I did sometimes with silk slings. And then I'm going to take out these basting stitches. I got pretty close, so that's going to be a challenge. Not usually that difficult. Whoops, looks like I took out some of my main stitches instead. Well, you know, these things happen. All's fair in love and sewing. So I'll just go back in and re-sew the ones that I accidentally took out. And then I can remove the basting stitches here. And at this point, um, you know, just stitch the way you normally would. Um, I will probably, when I'm actually finishing this up, um, I'll do the edge stitching and I will probably do a little decorative stitch here, which you can't see because I've got the camera in the wrong place. So I do a decorative stitch along here. Um, but that's pretty much it. You can see that the wrong fabric doesn't show when I have this reversed. So if I were to thread it like this, you wouldn't see this on the side, which you would if you hadn't done this little overlap. So that's that's the purpose of this. Um, of course, there's no functional reason that you shouldn't have the print also fold over. Um, this just, it's not any harder to do. And I think it's a, a nicer look in the end. I hope that was helpful. Thanks very much.